All right, everyone, welcome to 96 Boards Open Hours, sponsored by Lenaro. Got this right here. I'm missing my Lenaro hat today, but we are excited to make a few announcements today. And for those of you who don't know, I guess we'll start off quickly giving a little synops. But for those of you who don't know what 96 Boards Open Hours is, 96 Boards Open Hours is a place for the community to meet the developers, the development, and get questions answered, talk, hang out, have a little cup of coffee and have some fun to talk about, uh, talking about 96 Boards Tech. So as you know, two weeks ago, we had the 96 Boards, sorry, we had the Lenaro Connect, and there were a lot of 96 Boards announcements. We have the new uh, IoT edition board, the Carbon that's out. There are several other exciting things that have been announced with regards to the community edition boards. We have the Nadana that was announced by Gumsticks, several other ones that were shown at tables by Aero. Um, and so, yeah, there's a really cool YouTube page you can go check out with all of the videos that were that were streamed during the event. So I would suggest checking that out. I don't know, maybe Shovan can share that link for the YouTube channel that has all of the that has all of the videos. Now, we did send out the emails for all of the ten Dragon Board 410C winners. If anyone has any questions, if you are one of the winners and you have a question, I have gotten a lot of emails back. Uh, feel free to ping me anytime. Join here, in open hours, ask questions about that. Uh, Deepak, I know you're in the call here. How long did it take you to get your dragon board? Just you know, give or take a couple weeks or what? Uh, no, I think the day it was shipped, I received in two days. Oh, okay. And it so, was a complete surprise to me. Okay, cool. So it it did come pretty quick. Then. Yeah. Great. So everyone who's, who submits, uh, we, we, I sent out an email with the process of how to claim your dragon boards. Anyone who does that will, will uh, receive them pretty quickly. Now, I know that this giveaway is over, right? The dragon board giveaway is done, but I've been talking to Chauvin. I've been talking to a lot of people over at Connect, and we do plan on doing these giveaways as often as possible. So we did dragon board last time. Next time, hopefully we can do the high key. Maybe then we can do the MediaTek X20. Maybe we can do some sensor boards. Maybe we can do any sort of sensors, mezzanine products. We can do all sorts of cool stuff. So we hope to do these giveaways as often as possible. Uh, now, the announcements. We have some really exciting things going on coming up in these next 10 weeks. So as you know, we did season one, and then we took like this huge break, an unbelievably long break. It's been months now. but. It's time to go into season two, and we're officially announcing season two starting next week on October 20th, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. British Standard Time. And we will be opening up with a special guest appearance of Keith Lee from Gumsticks. And he has some really cool, exciting stuff to show us. He's gonna be going over the AeroCore 2 drone mezzanine board. He's gonna be attaching that to one of our 96 boards. Uh, possibly a dragon board so you guys can test out some stuff there if you have one of those and then he's going to be running through the geppetto program showing how to make the mezzanine board a little bit more intricate than what we've already done in the show and then he's going to hook it up to a drone and show us uh, the process of building a drone on your 96 boards so it's going to be a two episode the first two episodes of season two exciting uh, uh, stuff with drones now with that theme in mind, we are planning to keep that going throughout the throughout the following or throughout the rest of the season. So, kind of focusing more on drones, robotics, uh, fun actuation and sensing aspects that you can do with your with your dragon boards or your uh, sorry your uh, 96 boards. Cool. So now. I know that I talk a lot at the beginning, but I usually open up for questions. And with with regards to last week, John Mark, you came in with questions on the sensors mezzanine board, correct? Yes, yes. So Grant likely is in the call right now. I don't know if he's going to be able to talk because he's he's kind of trying to juggle two meetings, but um, he did join just for you. So, oh, so maybe, yeah, he was the one who created that board, and and I told him that you were working on it now, and he was really excited. So I don't know if he's going to be able to answer right now. 
if he's there, if he's. Uh, I am having a really hard time connecting to my next meeting. So go ahead, ask the question while I try to get my other computer rebooted. There you go. All right, John Mark, the floor is yours. Hello, Grant. <clears throat> so, I. Okay, it's it's not coming from me. The, the, the noise. It's okay. I, I, got know, it. I have some noise here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm using the, the mezzanine board and I found a few things that we wanted to change. Uh, but now I'm progressing on testing and I tested also the, the communication on the board. That means I tested the UART1 and the UART0. As far as UART1 is, one is concerned, it's, everything is fine. The console is working fine. Uh, also, I could program the Arduino very well using the, the connector P6 and uh, an ISP uh, programmer. <clears throat> but now I'm trying to communicate through the UART0 and I am on the Android iOS. I'm not using the Debian. I noticed that you connected hardware, RT, the request to send, you connected it uh, on UART0. That means you are using it to program the, the, the Arduino. And you need several resets during the programming. I'm fine with that. The problem is if I'm using it in Android and just try simply to connect and, and make a, a loopback or make some connection between the Arduino and the, the UART0, I can't because every time the request to send is raised and making a clear to the Arduino. So the Arduino is reset. And I right. cannot connect the Arduino in that in that point. So what, what you need to do is you need to change the mode of the serial port and use S so in a normal Linux environment, that's the STTY tool. I did. I, okay, I did. Android is not recognizing STTY, so I installed BuzzyBox, which installed me all these tools, missing tools. But I did exactly as you did for the Debian. I sent the the option uh, minus HUCP or something like that. Yeah. It's true that the RTS is not raised anymore. But then I use I'm using my Android app, which is trying to connect to the to the UART zero, and the UART zero is back to the the, the back as it was before. So he, he just ignored the HUCP. So it is possible, okay, I don't know enough about the serial layer to know what's happening there, but it is possible that uh, the Android app or the library that the Android app is using resets the serial port to what it thinks the serial port should be. So you'll need to go digging into that. Or well, see the, app, the app is mine, the app is mine. So but, then, uh, I, I am using, I am sending uh, the, I'm opening the STTY port. It's not an okay. app that I took from Android uh, Play or whatsoever, I did it. But now we have to find a way from Android, we have to find a way to put it on, uh, on a raw mode and I don't know how to do it then. I wish I could help you. What you could do is you could look at uh, what Aoctal the STTY tool is sending and duplicate that in your Android app. You could try that and see if that helps any. I will uh, do it. Yeah. Uh, other than, th than that, I don't know what to suggest. I am not an expert in Android. Uh, so. Well, my suggestion was, I, I wrote on the forum this problem already. My suggestion why still we, we have to a little bit to redesign the mezzanine board also for the GPIO on the five volt missing. And we are, I'm already in contact with Akira. Well, Akira did start something, but he yep. didn't go through. So since we have to redesign it, I would suggest to put a jumper on this RTS if in case someone don't want to use it, then we hardware, we hardware, we could, could uh, disable this option. I thought I put a zero on resistor on uh, on the line um, because that that was an issue that came up. Um, but anyway, I I apologize. I need to drop off now uh, because I've got to get to this get onto this meeting. Uh, okay.
but yeah, I mean, that, that would work. I'm not doing that board anymore, so I won't be responsible for any of the respins. Akira is the one who's most likely to do a respin, and I'm fully support having the option to use a GPIO pin instead of an RTS. That's fine by me. The, re the way that board was designed is we kept it as close to the um, to other designs as possible, to other Arduino designs as possible, and using the RTS was the most transparent way to build it. But as you've discovered, that is the, the weakness, is the RTS line. If an application tries to use it as an RTS line, we've got problems. Okay, I will, I will try to find a solution with Android, and I will keep writing on the forum my solutions. Uh, oh. Otherwise, I will also suggest really to, to re remove it, because on, on this uh, reset solution on the Arduino, there is also a little switch which should reset, but it doesn't. And yeah. then if you follow, you have a jumper which was not mounted, and even so, I mount a jumper and, and, and make the short circuit, I don't reset anything. So there is some problem also in the layout in that point. It's not yeah. exactly, the layout is not made exactly as the, 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 the schematic is. So here we have, we still have to have a look on when we rebuild the mezzanine to figure out what's going on also around there. Right, right. Okay. Okay, thank you, Grant. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, Grant, for stopping in. Appreciate it. No problem. Take care. Great, so I hope that was able to help some there, um, John Mark. We'll, we'll have to kind of keep tackling that with Akira. And I mean, everything's available on the 96 boards GitHub. So um, we'll kind of just keep tackling this problem. Is that cool? I'm fine with that. It's just, I just wanted to know if I'm on the right track or if someone would tell me, oh no, you shouldn't do that. You should do that and that. Now it's, it seems that I'm on the right track and try to find a solution. That's all what That's I wanted great. to know, not wasting too much time but I will go on and, and figure out how to do that. Cool, cool. No, thanks, thanks. Uh, when I mentioned that you were working on that board, he was very excited. I mean, he he hasn't joined an open hours call in a long time. This is a, probably only his second time joining it. It was because he was excited to hear someone's working on his old project. So thank you very much. Um, there's a there's a question in the chat here from David Dave T uh, Trower. Hope I pronounced that right. Uh, I have a question about the Grove sensor board. I'm interested in using the servo. I am trying to use the example code for a sketch that uses the servo. However, the code attaches the servo to pin nine. I'm not sure how to map this connector on the board. So pin nine, I'm guessing they're talking about pin nine on the Arduino uh, pins. So if you're using the servo, has anyone ever messed with the servo there? I have my board right here and I'll pull it out. Um, has anyone messed with the servo on the sensor mezzanine board yet? I know someone from Qualcomm did not too long ago, but shoot, my board's actually under here. So you don't get to see all the mess that's around here. <laughs> That's what all that noise is. But we can hurt it. We can hurt it. We don't see it, but we heard it. Yeah. So if you're looking at the if you're looking at the the board, and I'm I'm just trying to assume this is the question you're asking, but uh if you kind of scan down these blue rails, the blue rails are the Arduino pins. And or I guess we would call them the at mega pins or whatever you want to call them. But um, if you scroll down this one, you'll see that they're numbered along the side. And if it's saying to hook into pin nine, then pin nine is going to be right around here. And the, the numbers are right along the outside of the rail. So you should be able to see them there. Um, I don't know if that if that helps you. I, I uh, what, do you, what do you think, Dave? Maybe you want to try hooking into those and running the code that way? Uh, you're muted here. I can I can take you off mute. There you go. Yeah, it, well, it's my understanding that I, I've got the the schematic. It's my understanding that the Arduino board pins would go to some you know connector like the D4 or something like like that. So I this is where I'm kind of confused. There's multiple. I, I can see there's a pin nine that goes to looks like PC4 SDA. Um, so I'm just wondering, is there a way I could go? 
I mean, I can change the code if it – is there a way I could change the code to go to a different pin that would go directly to um, something I could plug the servo in, like the D4 or something? So when you're programming this, are you using the Arduino IDE to upload the sketches through the through the micro USB? Is that how you're doing it? Or how, how are you uploading the sketches? Um, yeah, I can run the Arduino uh, IDE directly off the Dragon board. Yeah. Um, you know, it comes up. I've got uh, Debian as my operating system. And there's an example sketch for the servo that does a sweep. Like, I guess it moves the servo from 0 to 180 and back. So I'm trying to run that since it's already written, and that's where it in the code it it uses pin nine. And I can, I can, I don't mind changing the pin from pin nine to something else. I just don't understand all the mapping as to. Um, I just want to be able to plug the servo into the board, and and be you know and have it work but without going through the. You know, Arduino yes. pin. Oh, you don't want to go through the Arduino pins. That that's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so you want to avoid the blue rails. That is something I don't, I'm not aware of. I wish I had Akira on the call right now or someone who's messed with this a little more. Uh, I know, I don't know Andy, if he's done any work with the, Ar with the Arduino pins, but I've only ever used the Arduino on the Arduino pins. So, I mean, I've done like the same thing you're doing, pulling up the IDE on the Dragon Board or on your 96 boards and then, and then pushing the sketch through and then just running it off the blue rails. So besides that, I haven't looked into that. However, what I can do is I can bring this up somewhere uh, offline and then maybe get someone in here next week for you to talk about it. Uh, that's that's pretty okay. much the best I can do because we don't have a lot of developers in the call right now. I know we have, uh, what is it, Victor Chong. Uh, that's pretty much all I have from, from, <laughs> from Lenaro right now. Uh, Chauvin, he's kind of managing the call. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Otherwise, have you tried testing it through the pin nine on the blue rail? Like, did it work that way? No, I I, I haven't um, tried it, but is that the, would that be the, can you show me where pin nine is on the board? Can you hold it up again? Yeah. So, so if you're, if you're looking at the sensors mezzanine here, this is identical. These two blue rails right here that go up and down here, pin nine is going to be right along the longer rail about okay. halfway down. And you and you'll see that they're numbered actually. So you can you can, if you look real close, you can see it goes SCL, SDA, A ref, ground, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So it's it's right there actually. That's pin nine. Pretty okay. hard to see, but but yeah, so you should be able to plug right into that if it's telling you if that's what the code is running, as long as you have the rest of the servo pins plugged into the right places, such as, you know, ground, BCC, or whatever else the servo needs, then that pin should send in the data for it to move. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would suggest testing that out because I guess the first thing is just to make sure that at least the the chip is working properly with the, the rails that it's supposed to work with. And then from there, maybe we can move on and try to push the push the data somewhere else. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, I, I will try to bring someone in next week to, to take a look at that. Um, okay. Oh, and Deepak is saying, if you could share the link for a code you re you're referencing, I think it's just basically, uh, he's talking about the, the stock sketches that come with the Arduino IDE, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. If you, if you open up the IDE, there's examples. And then for the servo, I'm trying to run the one that's called sweep, which just, goes from zero to 180 and then back, if I remember okay. right. Yeah, unfortunately, I've taken this box and my other box, I have two boxes of these 96 boards kits. I've taken them to several conventions and my servos got stolen. <laughs> so I don't have any servos to test right now, but I'll try to find one uh, so that I can at least try and test it by next week. Uh, Deepak, but if you go download the Arduino, if you go on your Dragon Board and go download the Arduino IDE, just go to Arduino website, and download the IDE, you'll have a set of like sample sketches. And he's saying that the sweep one is the one that that he's been testing. So yeah, sorry, Dave. So, I wish I could help you. Uh, which other pin you want to use actually? Or is it that you, you want to use, uh, you don't want to use pin nine or you want to use some other, uh, so, so, so what is the issue actually? 
uh, well, I was just hoping to plug the the servo into like one of the connectors, like D D four. I was wondering, is there a way I can go from D four to one of the Arduino uh, pens? Uh, okay, so if if we uh... You should be able to do that, but only thing you have to find that uh, D uh, D uh, D uh, uh, four something like what, whatever you want to use is connected to which uh, digital pin. Like the one uh, which is currently you are referring is uh, connected to D nine. So you just have to see the D four which you want to use the connectors is is uh, connected to which uh, Arduino pin, and based on that you can enable that in your code. Uh, I can actually have a look, and uh, if you post your question in the forum, uh, I can answer it there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have a, I do have it out on the forum. So, do you have a link to that question so that we can, so that we can? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll find that. Yeah. Okay. Great. That that's awesome. Yeah, Deepak. So I didn't know that actually. That's that's pretty cool. You clarified that. So you're saying D D four through D seven. Uh, you can just move. Uh, you can move anything from the Arduino set rails over to those pins as well. Correct. Just correct. resetting them. That's that's cool. I didn't know that. Good information. Uh, Andy just said, looking at the schematic, the schematic D5 appears to be connected to pin nine. Oh, so there you go. So you should be able to use D5. It's mirrored to to pin nine. D5. Okay. Which means it looks like you can just hook the servo up right to D5. Okay. Uh, I'll, I thought I tried that, but I'll try that again. So that makes sense, actually, because doesn't the servo, and again, I haven't had my servo for a while, but doesn't it come with one of those preset connectors on there? So it makes it hard to plug into the Arduino rail, which is probably why they mirrored it to one of those connector D5, D4 through D7s. Cool. It's a good question. The little things like this probably get people stuck for quite a while. Did uh, did did that get you going right now, Dave? Are you okay with that? It, yeah, yeah. I think that that'll get me get me going. Um, yeah, I'm getting bringing. I'm gonna put the link to, in the chat group. So. Okay, great. So let's see. We'll see if we have another question in here. Yeah. So David just Dave just shared the the link there. So we have a, a enough people in here to kind of just go down the list and see if anyone has any questions. I don't know if Andy came with any questions or if he just came to hang out. I, for those of you who don't know who Andy from Workshop Shed is, is he has a cool cool Twitter account where he's built quite a few things. One of which was a a kind of home surveillance type system using the Dragon Board 410C. Let me post this actually because this is pretty cool. There was a blog that was posted on the on the oh I clicked the wrong button on the Qualcomm Developer Network. He was developer of the month, I think it was. Let's see, developer of the month, drone. Oh, so here we go. I'll find this real quick. DSP. Oh man, they only put like three blogs per page. You gotta go all the way through these. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll have to find it. I'll have to find it a little later. I guess I can't find it. But regardless, uh, very cool, very cool. Uh, it's, it has like a dragon, and then you pass by it. The PIR sensor is triggered. It takes a picture, sends a text message, does all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, there, Andy posted it. So that's the Qualcomm Developer Network blog there and uh, we, we look for projects like this if if you're ever building on your 96 boards and you come up with a project like this i'm hoping to get andy on one of these episodes to show us how he built it possibly show off some cool stuff for us maybe sometime in the future but but uh but it's always nice to have uh, people that are fully involved like that in the calls all right more questions popping up here hi i have a question about using yeah no thank you andy 
I have a question about using SPI on the Dragon board. I installed a Debian version, including spy dev, but when I connected a sensor board to the SPI pins of the Dragon board, I don't see any data. Is there an SPI program to use? Did anyone ever try interfacing Dragon board with the SPI? So there is a instruction set here that I'm gonna share with you, and I don't know if you had the chance to follow it, but there's a way to set up uh, spy dev on the Dragon board. I'm going to post this right here. One of our developers here at Lenaro wrote this, and it was not too long ago. I haven't heard anyone have any issues with it, but that instruction set should be able to help you out. Uh, I hope that's that's enough for you to get kind of to at least try some stuff. Have you were you already familiar with this? Is that what you followed, Mister Miss CB? All right, we'll let you get back on that. I'll get to the next question. Do you have any idea about eHealth sensor serial port communication with the Dragon Board? eHealth sensor serial port communication. I don't, I don't, but I know that I've been to a few hackathons and I've seen some people build some very cool uh, uh, stuff around health. So, I mean, I know they did a, they did like a uh, dragon board health sensor. Um, it, so if you go, uh, if you go to um, the Qualcomm developer network and you go through these blogs, kind of similar to what Andy uh, Andy Workshop Shed from Workshop Shed shared, th there was a blog a while back that talked about this group of people who built this cool health monitoring system around the dragon board. And because they built this, they actually were, I think were sent to several other hackathons sponsored by Qualcomm to go do some cool stuff. But you might find some more stuff about that. Let me just share the general address here for the blogs. But if you kind of scroll through those, you, you should find some, some interesting things that people have done, one of which is that health kit there. And then there you go, let's see. So I already followed it, but how do I trigger the data from the sensor board? Maybe there is an existing program. So that, I, I don't know about that, uh, CB. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Uh, I've, I haven't really messed with the SPI just yet myself. So, so, I mean, as you know, or if you have been following the documentation side of things has been slowly ramping up and we've gotten to a point where now we have a nice foundation, but uh, little nuances or, or setups for things like this are still missing. And so we're, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of hoping that, that the community, you guys, everyone here can help to kind of start sparking these, these, uh, these things from within. So hopefully we can start like, you know, you need this, which means I'm going to write this down. So we'll start getting this stuff pushed out. We're going to start finding priorities based on what the community needs. And um, with our, with our limited resources, we'll start pushing stuff like this out. So I hope that, I hope that, you know, you can get, you can be patient on that and we'll definitely be working on it. But at the same time, if I find anything about it, I'm going to bring someone in here next week and we'll talk about it too. So it's always a plus. <clears throat> what we got next here? Celine, did you come with any questions today? Uh, Celine Dacker, Dacker. <laughs> Sorry to pronounce one of these names. Uh, Dacker, let's see. Celine, no, cool. All right, welcome. Welcome to Open Hours. Dacker. Dave Trower, you got your question. Feel free to interrupt if you have any more. Uh, Deepak Mishra, you're you're kind of a seasoned veteran here uh, at <laughs> an open hours. I think you've been to almost every single one. Okay, so this time. Yeah, you know, you know, you can just interrupt if you if you want to talk about something. <laughs> uh, Jay Kobos. Jay Kobos, did you come with any questions today? Okay. Um, this is actually interesting, what Andy from Workshop Shed brought up. He says, would be interested to know if anyone successfully used the camera with the dragon board other than a USB. And so I actually saw someone using a special built camera at Connect, and they were using it through the 
through the ST micro board. It was the, the new ST micro board that's been announced. And, and I'll show this one to you. Let's see, 96 boards. Um, also, supposedly, I mean, more mezzanines are coming out with these camera connectors, right? But there's, there's also needs to be enablement for them. And this, that's the problem. But I did see some boards going. So this is the ST micro board. Let me copy the link address here. ST micro board right there. It has a camera connector that you can plug into. I, I actually, I hope that's the one. Uh, it doesn't look like it's available to purchase just yet unless the website hasn't been updated. I'm not sure, but that one should have a, a camera connector somewhere on there. And then you have the Arrow Core 2. And this is going to be the fun one. So I'm actually working with Keith Lee. He's going to be uh, he's going to be basically sponsoring our first and second episode of season two next week, October 20th and October 27th. He's going to be coming in. He's going to use the Arrow Core 2 board. Let me let me copy this address here. And the Arrow Core 2 board is a very unique board in that it's meant for drones, right? So it's it's actually meant to hook in cameras. Uh, it, it has uh, all sorts of tracking systems. Uh, uh, enough enough pins to hook up several motors, uh, sensors, it has everything built into it. And he's going to demo this for us. He's going to tell us about how he made it. He's going to talk about uh, about getting it set up. And then he's going to put it onto a drone. And hopefully, if we can get it, go if he can get it going, he'll, he'll fly it around. That's what we're hoping for. That'll be on the 27th episode. And then we're going to document all this and push it out to you guys so that if you want to do it yourself, uh, you'll be able to build your own drone too using a, a, a 96 boards and, and one of these Arrow Core 2 boards. Definitely way cheaper than than uh, buying a drone, <laughs> but you'll pay for it in time, in, in your time spent building it. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry. Back to your question, Andy. I, I go on to these tangents. The, the, we're hoping to enable uh, 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 cameras on this, right? And at Connect, I saw cameras enabled on one of the Dragon Boards using the ST Micro Board, and I saw cameras enabled using this board. But the problem is, is that there aren't any cameras on the market right now. So the cameras that work are like these prototyped cameras that the companies brought to demo them and show them, right? <laughs> that is the problem. And I don't know enough about it to start talking in technical terms, but I can share a, a uh, hardware Dragon Board 410C. Uh, Lawrence King, who was part of the, who was part of the, sorry, let me, the mini series that we had these last few weeks, he pushed out a, there we go. He pushed out a, an app note to show people how to build this camera that should work with these boards. I'm going to share the, uh, the app note here real quick. Let me find it. Tools and resources. I'm, all I'm doing is I'm surfing through the, the Qualcomm developer network, and I'm just digging to the point where I know this particular link is. And this right here is the link for the uh, creating a camera mezzanine and camera flex circuit for the Dragon Board. That's for the Dragon Board, but this plugs into the mezzanines uh, on the, that you can make that, that already exist. So yes, this was running at Connect. There are ways to do it. Are they available publicly just yet? No, but there are a lot of manufacturers that are very interested in getting this pushed out to the public. So we're hoping to see things like this surface very soon. Uh, all sorts of camera enablement. That's what we're hoping. Sorry, that took like 20 minutes to answer there. Um, all right, continuing with the list. Jeff, any questions? Did you come with anything? John Mark, sorry, I skipped you. Did, did, did you want to talk about anything? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they'll start pushing them out. I, I know that there are several manufacturers. I, I'm not sure if I can say who, but there are several manufacturers that are looking at these camera modules. And I mean, like the estimate is that they're going to, that, that a lot would sell, right? So who wouldn't want to pick them up? That's the, that's kind of uh, why these manufacturers are looking at them. So once they start building them, you'll start seeing them probably pop up on like Aero and stuff like that. Uh, Jeff Mc, uh, Knight, Knight with a K. Uh, did you come with any questions for us today? 
Mr. Knight. Go to the next person. <clears throat> um, Matt Hucker, any questions for us today? Because after this, we're going to go into one more set of announcements and then just kind of open the floor, probably go into to after hours. I'm watching Dave drink coffee and mine's empty. I need more. <laughs> Got a Martin. Oh, sorry. Uh, Matt Hucker. You've been here for a while waiting. I don't know if you came with any urgent questions. Matt Hucker. Nada. Okay. We have Mark Bolzern, the star of, of Connect. It's all over the place. That was a lot of fun. How so? Oh man, no. I mean, like you were on both of the both of the '96 boards panels, and I mean, like uh, the gala. Every everything was fun. <laughs> You're right. Everything was fun. Yeah, it was a blast. That that is that is probably the best conference I've ever been to in my entire life. Oh really? So, uh, yeah. Please please feel free to pass that on. Uh, I loved the format. Um, it. The, the the really nice thing about it was Lenaro has what uh, 300 some odd employees and in effect it's a company meeting that's been opened to the public a multi-day company meeting including parties including seminars including employees do, uh, presenting what they're doing so other people can attend and find out about it whether they're employees or not employees it allows input from the public that showed up uh, there was lots of great food. The, uh, the, 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 there was just no end of opportunities for communication. It was really easy to, if you, if you ran across somebody and go, oh, who's that? You could use Pathable to find out, uh, okay, well, yeah, they attended this one. That's the picture of their face. Okay, yeah, I'd like to meet with that guy. You could, you could arrange to meet with them. There'd be a meeting room available. I've never been to a conference that's as well organized and as well uh, planned, et cetera, as that one. I, in fact, I'd go so far as to call it an unconference. You're, you're going to have to pass that on to Eba, Siobhan. Yeah, it's very kind words, Mark. <laughs> I mean, Eba, Eba was, in the end of this month or early now, we'll be opening tickets for Budapest. So if any of you want to join, let us know. We probably can, you know, look after you guys. I, I think that I think that um, we're gonna do another open hours panel if uh, Shovan approves or gets Eva to approve. What do you think, Shovan? No, we will definitely have open hours panel for reconnect now. I think it was successful the last one, so be good to see. Yeah. So, yeah. so for all of all of the regulars here, maybe John, Mark, we're gonna be closer to your area. Deepak, I'm not sure. Mark, of course, Olzern, but maybe we can uh, get you guys over there. Who knows? Yeah, uh, you never. Obviously, you guys would have to pay for your travel, but we could get you like a, a an entrance to Lenaro, you know, uh, or to the Connect, because um, you guys haven't been there. Oh, okay. Daniel Thompson just joined. I kind of want to bring that camera question back up. Uh, who else? There was another question about the Daniel. Are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Thanks for thanks for joining. Um, so we got a question from Andy Workshop Shed. He was asking if if you've had any, if anyone has had any success hooking up cameras other than uh, the U through the USB to the 96 boards, to Dragon Board in particular. And I was um, saying that we, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you said what you said. I was saying that we've had a demo. We, there was a demo at the, at Connect that was hooked, that hooked up a camera to, I believe it was the ST micro board. Um, so there was enablement in that particular build, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you've seen anything else or anything that the public has access to right now. Um, didn't Lawrence say he'd, uh, sorry, Lawrence say that he had published a, a app note about it? Yeah, so Which there was an app note. I, I shared the app note with everyone and that was published, but that, that requires everyone to build, that requires them to build their own camera. <laughs> oh, right, I see. So I thought it was an off the shelf camera. Um, I yeah. mean, yes, that's what I recall having seen. Um, so anyway, using it, and it is all based on that STM board that's been mentioned, which uh, has only just been released. It might be hard to get hold of at the moment. Yeah. So you know, again, that that was. I'm glad that I got that confirmed. But uh, so that's that that that'll be coming out soon. The public will start getting to see these things more. 
Great. So yeah, I was just going down the list, seeing if people had questions, but we made it to Mark. Thank you very much uh, for the kind words that connect. Eba was really working hard that whole time there. Uh, I mean, I wanted to, I, I talked to her so much through chats and everything internally, and I barely got any time to hang out with, with a lot of the people that, that, you know, I deal with on a daily basis because everyone was so busy, you know, making sure that connect was going properly. And I was like, oh man, but I'm glad you, you, you enjoyed it. Yeah, having um, been uh, having been behind the scenes on all sorts of various trade shows, including creating some from scratch, being speaker, being literally in all the various roles of trade shows, I could tell, unlike the regular attendee, I could tell uh, that people had tasks. But frankly, everybody did a pretty good job of hiding how busy they were and being friendly anyway. And I, I want to send a shout out literally to everyone there for that, because as not really a Linaro insider, I felt totally welcome. And I, regardless of what position somebody held, uh, it had a you know peer to peer kind of conversation. And and that's kind of what I think open source is about. Uh, you guys represent it really well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh... Kind, kind words. Now we're going to have to share this video to, the, to everyone. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think we can uh, use this for Budapest, definitely. Yes, uh, Budapest is going to be a, an interesting one. I can't wait to see it go up online so I can start reading about it. But uh, the place looks awesome. And uh, it, it will cater to the people who are over there closer in Europe. So we'll see what we can do there. All right, I want to finish going down this list here. So um, next is Martin S. Did you did you come with any questions today, Mr. S? Give you a second there while you respond. If you are, uh, who do we got not muted here, Mr. Daniel? Okay, so uh, Martin S. Then we have um, Pradeep. Pradeep, did you come with any questions today for us? We have we have our uh, our esteemed open hours crew, and then we have Daniel Thompson here from uh, from from all sorts of uh, departments within Lenaro. He can pretty much answer any question <laughs> or try. All right? No, no, nothing from Pradeep. Ragnar, Ragnar, were you were you one of the winners of the Dragon Boards? I, I can't remember. No, Ragnar's, everyone's pretty quiet today. I'm going to try this name. It's going to be hard. So, Thiramalesh. Thiramalesh. HS, did you did you come with any questions today? What we got going here? No, just hanging out. Unfortunately, not a winner. Sorry, we'll get you in the next one. For those of you who watched the show that we did the drawing, I totally let go of the little rattle cage thing the barrel that was spinning the ping pong balls and all the ping pong balls spilled all over the place it was a it's a mess but it was it still worked um okay last one Thir Malesh or victor chong you're, you're from lenaro so I, i'm not sure if you came with any questions good seeing you at connect though all right cool so we covered everyone that means that it's pretty much time to give my closing announcements Unless anyone wants to interrupt with any last minute questions. I'll give my uh, closing Did John Mark get his serial port working? Oh, he was talking to Grant. Grant was on here earlier. All right, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, they were able to at least, John Mark was at least able to confirm that he was going in the right direction. Yeah, I, I took one of the Arduino example programs um, and hacked it about a little bit. Um, just because the serial echo thing doesn't actually do serial echo. So if you take the example that appears to repeat what you're saying, it, it doesn't. Um, but I took one of the serial demos and, and you know made it echo what I typed, and that's just working there. So so the the UART LS0 serial connection to the Arduino is definitely definitely usable on a dragon board. Uh, how if did you, you want to pick oh, 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 oh. how did you do it? I I have. I have a program running on Arduino, and I'm sending the data out to to the Dragon board, and they don't pass because as soon as put as I put the 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 UART zero in input, 
I get the RTS, which is setting my Arduino. How did you do it then? I, I got exactly the opposite. So I programmed the Arduino, um, <laughs> which leaves it in reset. And then when I opened the terminal emulator, it came out of reset. Um, and I think actually the terminal emulator is designed using PicoCom. Um, and the terminal emulator that I was using puts the serial back port back like it found it. So it would come up, it would run correctly, it would boot the Arduino, uh, not Arduino, sorry, it would boot the AVR. Um, and then as soon as I disconnected my terminal emulator, it put the serial port back the way it found it. And the AVR would go back into reset when I disconnected. But while the serial port was open, it was definitely working. Uh, and that was using PicoCom. Could, could you go to the forum and see my, my thread and make me some notes on that? Because I, I, I inform exactly what I have done and my problem. And I, I ask if someone has a solution. Ah, cool. I haven't seen the forum topic. I have to admit, I've been catching up on other things this week. Um, I had a quick glance a couple of days ago. I didn't, I didn't take the, the, the link again, so I should try it to find it. Yeah, it'd be really helpful if you could share the link on the chat before we leave. Because I'll yeah, well, yes, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Mm. But yeah, after you spoke last week, I, I double checked this, and yes, I have it all working on a Dragon Board sensor platform, PicoCom. So that was what I did. You, you know what? Also, Daniel, I wanted to share this. I'm sorry for interrupting, but I guess it's not time to go. This was a question that was asked earlier before you got here. I wasn't sure how to answer it. I just posted it in the chat. It has to do with the SPI on Dragon Board. And then we were asked this. He says he already followed the instructions. So there's some instructions that Ricardo made, Ricardo Salvetti made right here. And he already followed those instructions, but I'm posting the, the, the rest of the question there. So those were the three pieces. And I think he's still in the call. It's CB that posted these. Let me see. Yeah, CB's still here. So I don't know if you have any advice for him on that. I told him I'd try to bring someone in next week to talk more about it. Yeah, I think you might have to bring somebody who's actually done it before. So I had I2C going on a Dragon Ball, but I've never used SPI on it. Um, so yeah, I, I, so anybody who asked on the forum, I'd have pointed them at exactly that, uh, that document. Um, I usually dig out a, a signal analyzer at this point to check that the, the clock is ticking. Um, so, so we'll try to find someone next week again. Sorry about that. We'll try to find someone next week to to get that for you. Michael Welling joined. <laughs> is it is it early for you there, buddy? How you doing? Yeah. I just stopped in to say hi. Cool, cool. For those of you who don't know Michael Welling, he did the Robo Mezzi. Um, we're going to try to get him on one of these episodes coming up. We want to talk more about the Robo Mezzi again. He's, he, I think he did episode two of season one or episode three of season one. Always good to have him in the call. All right. Yeah. And all that yeah. Robo Mezzi uses SPI, by the way, and SPI works. Okay. Did you have Did you have any answers for for CB on this regards to this question? Were you using a Dragon Board when when messing with it? Yeah, I was using a dragon board, but I modified the device tree to enable the the MPU 9250 or whatever it was. Um, I also use a mainline kernel, though it wasn't the Debian version. But enabling SPI dev in the device tree is not supported anymore. So I don't know how you're exactly going to do that unless you make a new registration, which is part of the SPI dev driver and then add that to the device tree. Can't use a generic um, instantiation anymore in the kernel. So from what I understand, they're, they're actually trying to make this standard with the builds uh, there, but it's taking some time. Getting the SPI, the SPI enabled so that you can just have it standard in the device tree, getting it all set up. Yeah, well, they can enable the spy dev, which, requires a, a, some modifications to the kernel, subtle modifications to the kernel, but that doesn't support drive, device drivers in general. 
you have to do other things for that. Despite of it's just a user space hack for SPI. Yeah, they need to go deeper. So yeah, hopefully, I mean, I, from what I understand, there are people working on this to get it, I guess, what you maybe more standardized, you would call it, you just set up a little bit more user friendly. So th there are people working on it. It's just, I think they've just ran into roadblock after roadblock, but it, it is in the it is in the pipeline. So hopefully things become easier eventually. More documents will start popping up on how to use these things, simple three-step processes and stuff. We'll see. <laughs> One day. Yeah. A uh, tutorial would be yeah. nice. Um, changing the device tree or like a tutorial on how to do that it would be pretty helpful for more advanced users who want to get on to making device drivers instead of using user space hacks. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, well noted. I think that's what Ricardo's document is. So I didn't catch that. But that's what Ricardo's document is. So it is a description on how to change the, the, the device tree. Yeah, uh, uh, that one that I shared, right? That one that's on the GitHub. Okay. Yeah, that that's good to have. I'll have to take a look at it and see what he did. Oh, so again, good to have you on here, Michael. Uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, did that? I guess maybe I'll ask Michael this one question before I close out the call. But there was another question here that popped up about the Arduino pins. Dave, Dave Trower is still in here, but he was asking about the pin number nine being linked, which is right around here. Pin number nine being called on in one of the pre-built sample sketches using the the servo so it's a it's the sweep sketch that just rotates it 180 degrees and then back 180 degrees and the sketch calls on pin number nine but he wants to know if this pin number nine breaks out to any of these d uh d connectors and so i guess andy workshop shed found that it was linked to, to D5, but if there was a confirmation on your end, uh, that'd be good. I don't know if you've done anything, any work with that. So yeah, oh, uh, Andy Workshop Shed just posted the the uh, code, I guess the, the page, the tutorial for Sweep. Thank you. you. You know anything about that off the top of your, your head there? I'd look at the schematic. That's what I would do, right? That's what I can do right now. It, it's, well, that's what Andy, Andy did that, so then he linked it to D5. So we'll just wait. Okay. To hopefully, Dave, Dave, if you can come back next week and tell us if it worked, that'd be awesome, just so that we can have a have a confirmation if it worked. I'll, I'll try to test it myself. I just don't have a servo right now on me. I do have the servo that came with the, the sensors kit. Does that connect to that pin? Yeah, so basically what we're trying to do is install the IDE, the Arduino IDE, on your 96 boards. And then push the the sketch up to the the at mega, and then uh, plug in the the servo into D5, and then run it and see if it does the sweep. That's pretty much it. The the sweep sample. I mean, if anyone could come back and I if I find a servo, I'll test it out. But if anyone could come back next week and just say like, hey, that worked, I'll 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 ping someone to see if they tested it. All right, I'll check okay. it out. It should be pretty easy. Awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, unless anyone interrupts right now, we're going to do the closing remarks and we'll go into after hours. I, I need to grab another cup of coffee before, before we keep going. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. Once again, this was the 96 Boards Open Hours sponsored by Lenaro right here. We talked a lot about what is going to happen in the next season, season two, starting next week, October 20th. We will be talking to Keith Lee from Gumsticks. He's going to demo the AeroCore 2. He's going to talk about how he made it on Gumsticks, a uh, little bit about himself and Gumsticks itself, and then push on into hopefully demoing a drone. And I think it's gonna be exciting. We have a lot of really cool stuff coming up for you in the next 10 episodes. We all do a lot of robotics and a lot of demos. That's, that's kind of the goal. So stick around, we hope to see you next next week and i hope you enjoyed the show